Gin and tonics, vodka and cranberries, scotch and sodas, all fantastic drinks. Some would even consider classic cocktails. But not that exciting. We're here at 3030 Dundas West. A lot of bars and restaurants and locals are taking their cocktails much more seriously over the last few years. And today on In The Mix, we're gonna prove that. We've got four very experienced bartenders and they're gonna be put to the test. I'm Dave Mitten, and if there's one thing I've learned over the years, the key to staying fresh is to never stop exploring. <laughs> New cocktail recipes simply don't create themselves. Someone has to come up with them. So let's meet today's contestants. My name is Andre Aitchison and I work at Eleven. It's a part of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. My name is Christina Kuypers and I'm a Diageo brand ambassador. I think the thing that I'm looking most forward to is actually competing. My name is Leah Side. I work at Ruffles Auto Bar and Lounge. It's um, the number one tequila bar in Canada. My name is Michael Webster. I work at uh, Bar Isabel, which is 797 College Street. It's a new joint in Toronto, uh, Grand Pan Cameron just opened. So today you guys will be presenting your cocktails to three different judges. And they'll be grading your cocktails on creativity, originality, balance and texture, and most importantly, taste. Like any competition, there can only be one winner. So at the end of each round today, one of you will be eliminated. And tonight's three judges are Chef and food writer, Allison Kent. Cocktail writer, Christine Sismondo. Managing partner of Toronto Temperance Society, Oliver Stern. So today, guys, you've got three rounds to go through. With each round, there's gonna be a box with three mandatory ingredients that you must use in your cocktail. Along with that, you have access to everything behind the bar, and we've supplied you with syrups and bitters from the crafty bartender as well. Our first challenge is drink this name. And what that means is you're all going to have different ingredients. And each crate will also be the name of the drink. We've drawn the names backstage on who will be going first. Mike, you got number one. Go pick your crate. Christina, you got number two. Go ahead. Leah, you're number three. Go for it. Andre, I guess that means you're stuck with the last crate. There you are, my friend. Now let's open up those crates and see what you guys have to work with. Mike, you've got Okanagan Spirits Gin, Chaser's Pineapple Juice, Kaffir Leaves, and your drink's name is Backseat Driver. Christine is working with Myriad Views Straight Shine, Chaser's Lemon Juice, some Blackberries, and your drink's name is Charlie Horse. Leah, you're using Tag Number no. 5 Vodka, Chaser's Black Cherry Juice with some Dark Chocolate, and your drink's name is Samurai Haircut. And for Andre, Ironworks Pear Eau de Vie, Chaser's apple juice, some ginger, and your drink's name is Jury Duty. All right, you guys all have five minutes to create a cocktail based on the name that you were given, and your time starts now. So this is pretty intense so far. I mean, we're watching Mike Webster. He's got the Okanagan Spirits Gin, a little bit of the kaffir lime, and uh, pineapple juice. He looks like a man who knows what he's doing. Fun ingredients to play with. The, the kaffir maybe uh, adds a little bit of a, a curveball. How do you guys feel so far about how they're given the names? I think that's a tough challenge to try to figure out how to fit the ingredients with the name. Well, I noticed he uh, he's grabbed some Cointreau there, so a little bit of orange flavor to go with the lime and the uh, pineapple. Plan. He's doing a lot of uh, hand squeezing of uh, lime juice there, it looks like, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, over at the end, we've got Andre. He's got the Ironworks Pear Eau de Vie. He's got the fresh apple juice and some ginger. Ginger is such a great cocktail ingredient, but you do have to be careful with it because you've got to hit just exactly the right amount. So restraint's going to be important. We've got Christina Kuypers doing the Charlie Horse and uh, her main spirit's moonshine made in Prince Edward Island. She's got the blackberries and fresh lemon juice. Two and a half minutes. seems to be killing some ice over there. Yeah, so I'm is. guessing she's going for uh, some sort of a tiki style drink. Yeah, she's bashing and she's muddling. I think that uh, it's a it's a tricky ingredient for sure, the moonshine. Really looking forward to seeing what she does with that. When you're making tiki style drinks, you're playing with some 151 proof rums and, and you can certainly pull everything together quite nicely. It could be kind of boring and unoriginal if she doesn't take a risk and add something kind of interesting in there. 
to liven it up and, and make it more than just your standard um, summer cocktail. So Leah, she's uh, making a samurai haircut. I just watched her reach for that Laphroaig. And I'm such a fan of peaty scotches. I think that uh, in this particular cocktail, it's the chocolate that's the real challenge. The only thing that you can really do is sort of grate it, groom the cocktail with uh, with some chocolate. It's a big risk, and it could really stink the drink if the uh, Lafroy doesn't work with it. Thirty seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Time to present your drinks to the judges. I mean, when I think of Jared, dude, I think of just something, a place you don't really want to be at the time that you're there. So just making a cocktail that's easy to drink and gets down quick. So right off the bat, I have to say, it doesn't pack the punch I was expecting it to pack. No, not at all. It's very, quite light. It's the only one with no garnish. I was curious, actually, of how, how the ginger was going to incorporate it and whether or not it was going to be overpowering. And it's certainly a little underwhelming. Yeah, you can't really taste the ginger. Backseat driver to me is someone that's trying to call the shots. Uh, and I saw that in the kefir lime. In Okanagan Spirits, I've had it before. Um, it's really juniper, forward, light, vibrant gin. Nice aroma. It's in a lot of pineapple. It's a nice balance of flavors as well, yeah. I have to say. It, it's really subtle. It's really refreshing, too. Mm -hmm. This is the sort of drink that you can imagine having on a patio. The, the kaffir, I don't know if I get it other than aroma. I thought about ripping it up. I thought about, you know, putting all those leaves in there, and I thought it would overpower it. All around, I think it's a great one. Nice for summer. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly know what a samurai haircut looks like. So I figured edgy and I went with the nice, uh, kept it very purple. I thought adding the scotch and that nice smoky peaty flavor would kind of be the, the rest of the edginess going towards the cocktail. I definitely get a, get a peaty scotch sort of right in the forefront, which is uh, I'm a fan of peaty scotches. You didn't have the opportunity to see what they were working with, you would have no idea what was in that cocktail. Yeah, you really don't expect that hit of peat and smoke with this color and the chocolate on the top. And I'm not sure if I like the, the chocolate in my mouth. Floaty bits don't work too well. Mm -hmm. So I got a moonshine from Prince Edward Island. So my first thought was island drink. Just to top it off, a horse neck, orange zest to make reference to the Charlie horse that this drink will give you. Definitely like the, the appearance of this one with the crushed ice. Sort of the blackberry floating in. Blackberries play a supporting role, but uh, really the idea was to keep it light, tropical, and fun. It's got a beautiful color. I'm kind of attracted to this drink and want to drink it right away. Mm -hmm. The garnish, for me, it's a little bit overwhelming. You really have to use the straws. There's no other way to get at that cocktail. Well, guys four talented bartenders, but only three are staying. It's a tough decision because they all have redeeming qualities. There's something to be said for making great use of difficult ingredients. Yeah, it's always sad to uh, think of eliminating somebody who just pulled a really tough box of ingredients. But after tasting these four cocktails, certainly I think that we all are feeling that one of them just didn't uh, achieve the challenge as well as the, the rest. Mm -hmm. You were all asked tonight to create a cocktail based on a name given to you. And unfortunately, one of you has to be eliminated. You each have a billfold in front of you. And inside of one of those is a receipt. Whoever has that receipt has been eliminated from this round. Please open your billfolds. So it took us a little while to decide on which cocktail to choose. Uh, everybody had different boxes of mystery ingredients and I do think that yours was one of the harder boxes to work with. The main thing that we decided about your cocktail was a little watered down. We couldn't really get the key ingredients out of it and for those reasons we've decided that you're not going to continue on. Unfortunately Andre, you've been cashed out. I open my crate and I find that I have pear eau de vive which is something that I, I'd never worked with or never seen so it's kind of exciting to get a chance to use something that I'd, I'd never tried before. You have to take that chance because you know what, somebody might go out first and you might be that person, but that's it. You'll get better from that experience. All right, for our second challenge, it's called party time. And the theme of party time tonight is based on heaven and hell. You'll be creating two different drinks with your items, one for heaven 
and one for hell. And your ingredients are 40 Creek Barrel Select Whiskey, Chaser's Ruby Red Grapefruit Juice, and some fresh basil. You have seven minutes to create both drinks, and your time starts now. Well, this is obviously uh, taken off uh, a little more intense than last time. They got seven minutes to make two drinks each. Miss Kuipers, she's got the uh, Barrel Select Canadian Whiskey, the fresh grapefruit juice, and the basil, all three of them are the same, to make two different drinks. So heaven and hell. Seems like an easy challenge, but using the same ingredients with two totally different approaches, I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Heaven, hell, I prefer hell. I'm thinking shorter glass, maybe meat. He is using a wash with the grapefruit juice, I think. It looks like he's just poured it in, splashed it out a little bit, giving his glass a rub down with his basil. It's gonna be interesting. Thinking for the heaven one, I wanna keep it a little bit lighter. Really use the grapefruit juice, the basil, probably muddle in some citrus with the basil. I want to use some kind of bubbles in it, maybe like a, a soda or a ginger beer, just something to keep it really light and fluffy. Miss Kuipers has got some egg whites going, looks like, and uh, probably going to be frothy, silky smooth to like the clouds in heaven, I'm guessing. Well, certainly I like the, the idea of the egg whites to create a sort of lighter, frothier style of drink. Leah looks like she's doing egg white too. I think it's going to be beautiful. My worry on that one is that we're not going to be able to taste the whiskey through it. You know, mm -hmm. the, the egg white, it's going to be a frothy dessert drink instead of a hard drink and 40 Creek drink. Three and a half minutes. That's I see fair. quite a bit of uh, use of bitters happening, which uh, I think will play off the 40 Creek whiskey quite nicely. And I would imagine that might be uh, used to represent hell. It doesn't seem like they're using a whole lot of grapefruit juice, actually. I mean, for six drinks with grapefruit juice, it just seems like they're using the smallest amount. Yeah, I can see the way Webster is using it in the, just as a rinse, so he can sort of focus on a more spirited, bitter drink. Thirty seconds. Three, two, one. Time's up. So, Forty Creek wanted to showcase in the Heaven cocktail the, uh, the soft honey, the, the rich vanilla, three quarter ounces of grapefruit juice, and then I muddled uh, some fresh basil, and then a couple dashes of ango to keep well, it that's in check. That's great. It's yeah. like a tonic. It's very fruity, not too sweet. Yeah, right? Much less it's, on, it's on the other end for, for sweetness. Yeah. I get a lot more of the basil. Hell, shorter glass. I wanted to keep it on the bitter side of things, so I decided to rinse the glass with a little bit of grapefruit juice, a little Campari, some sweet vermouth, a splash of Benedictine, an ounce and a half of Forty Creek, a flamed lemon zest to uh, add a little bit of oil and keep that hellfire uh, motif going. I was very curious how that drink was going to turn out making a, sort of a spirit-based drink. If that's hell, then I'm lining up to get yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. So for my heaven cocktail, I wanted to make it tall, lighter, and um, really try and use the grapefruit juice that we have. I muddled some basil, oranges, I put grapefruit juice, a little bit of grapefruit hops bitters, a little bit of lemon juice, and I topped it with a ginger beer. I'm not one for sweet cocktails, and I don't find that overly sweet. It's a bit sweet, but there's um, a little sparkle in yeah. it, which I mm -hmm. think manages to, to balance mm -hmm. it. My Hell cocktail, I made it short, and I wanted to go with a fiery, spicy, darker cocktail. So I used uh, more whiskey. I did a full two ounces. I did the habanero bitters, as well as cinnamon syrup, a tiny bit of grapefruit juice just to get some citrus in there, uh, some crushed basil. <laughs> we've got some spice, we've got some smoke there. Oh, and a bit of scotch. I guess there's another peated scotch. I started with an egg white cocktail for the heaven, giving it a light frothiness and also giving it sort of an angelic feel. It visually tells the story of heaven and hell in a really neat way. And then went for a more bitter and spicy concoction for what I like to call my hell punch. That's delicious. I really like that a lot. There can only be two remaining. We've made a decision. The three of you have been asked to create two cocktails, one based on heaven, one based on hell. Unfortunately, one of you has to be eliminated. Please open your billfolds.
Leah, I think you did an absolutely great job of interpreting the heaven and hell. Unfortunately, they were both a tiny bit too sweet for all of us. The heaven drink, it started to taste a little bit like a creamsicle. Leah, you've been cashed out. Hope you have a great night. It's tough because as soon as you finish, you're like, oh, like I could have just, you know, I could have just done that. I met some nice bartenders and uh, overall it was a great experience. All right, guys, this is it. Final round, head to head, last call. You guys have 12 minutes to create three drinks. Beer cocktail, sparkling wine cocktail, ice wine cocktail. Go ahead and open your crates. For your beer cocktail, it's Amsterdam Blonde, Chaser's Mango Juice, and some hot sauce. For sparkling wine, we have Road 13 Chenin Blanc, Chaser's Peach Juice, and some fresh sage. Your wine cocktail will feature Peninsula Ridge Vidal Ice Wine, Chaser's Blueberry Juice, and Maple Syrup. Your time starts now. Off the bat, I'm watching Mike with his beer cocktail and he just put about two ounces of George T. Stagg bourbon into it. Sometimes bartenders reach for the top shelf ingredient thinking it's gonna make the greatest drink and it doesn't always work out. Christina's cocktail, she uh, looks like she's going in the form of a michelada. I I'd say she's got the mango juice going with the uh, Tabasco salted rim there. It's a good use of the key ingredient, absolutely. But I think that could be a problem because I think she might be playing it a little bit safe because everybody thinks beer cocktail michelada. Mike looks like he's on his ice wine now. Uh, he's using the uh, blueberry and maple syrup. I mean, the ice wine and maple syrup alone is really, really mm. sweet ingredients. Mm. And looks like he might have just put a whole bunch of uh, Angostura bitters in there too. It's like a lot. It's a good way to try to balance out all the, all the sweet ingredients though. I, I don't have too much experience drinking ice wine. Uh, it's a little sweet for my profile, so I'm looking at a lot of sugar content. Christina seems to be doing uh, some sort of muddling too with her ice wine over there and the blueberries. Uh, I'd say she's using a bit of this slow gin, probably balancing out the, the berry flavor right now. It's a bold move to be sure. Ice wine is definitely very sweet, but it has a nice tangy acidity to it. Uh, I'm gonna play up the blueberry juice with some slow gin and use Old Tom's Gin as a base, which is also a sweetened uh, gin product. I'm aiming for concentrated flavors. Yeah, berry on top of berry, I'm not sure. That might be berry overload. Well, one thing I've noticed with Christina is she keeps on tasting her cocktails, which uh, really is giving her a good idea as she builds them. And now there, it looks like they're uh, tackling the uh, last of the three, the sparkling, which a lot of classic cocktails. Uh, use sparkling wine, so this will be interesting. Peach nectar and the sage. I think the sage is going to be interesting because that's a touchy thing. You can really overpower a drink with it. I love sage. I love working with the tequila and sage, also pineapple juice, but there's peach juice, so I might try and combo it up with the pineapple juice and uh, bounce it out with a little bit of citrus. Uh, maybe throwing obscure bitters in there. I, this is one that I'm going to be a little creative with on the fly. Looks like Mike's using quite a bit of citrus there, and the citrus and the sage should work well together. So uh, I'm interested in seeing how it's all going to play out for him. Yeah. Two minutes, guys. Christina seems to be coming along just about finishing up. She seems to be banging away at breaking up that ice again. So this will be interesting to see what she's doing with that. When you smash the ice, it sort of releases a lot of, uh, a lot of stress. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a little, little Definitely. bit of a, a fun way to do that. And then also a lot of these drinks do work well with crushed ice. 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. All right. First cocktail. Love tequila. Love pineapple juice. Love uh, mango juice. There's muddled sage with cinnamon. Some bitters. Lime juice. Lemon juice. Top that off with the Chenin Blanc. It's Tromba and Cointreau. Tequila and, and orange liqueur. That's refreshing. It's uh, not shy on the sage. sage. Quite a bit of sage there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pasta with sage, it's so strong. Mm. There's so much in there. Second one, Plymouth gin, egg whites, 
Blueberry, right. like a half a bar spoon of maple syrup, half ounce of Angostura, finished with a blackberry, with a little sprig. Hmm. Yeah. One of the Angostura bitters. Yes, mm -hmm. the ice wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Strong flavors, mm -hmm. sort of slap you in the face. It is tricky to use the, the ice wine though, trying to balance it out. So last one, beer cocktail, ounce and a half of George Stagg, mango juice, some Hellfire bitters, a little bit of Tabasco sauce, topped off with Amsterdam blonde beer. Well, that's certainly uh, not shy on the bourbon. No, not at all. <laughs> it's a bold drink. Yeah. That absolutely is. Yeah. Started with the sparkling and peach nectar uh, that I played with, um, with a maraschino rinse, Old Tom Gin. I used grapefruit and hops bitters to keep it nice and simple and clean. Topped it with the sparkling and then garnished it with orange zest and uh, a sage leaf as well. It's a little hard to drink. This thing is going to sort of poke you in the face when you drink it. It reminds me of those vitamin supplements that you put in your water, but <laughs> I kind of like those, so that might be a good thing. Ice wine. So sweet, but it is tangy. So kind of played up the acidity with the blueberry juice and uh, Heyman's slow gin. Everything was really concentrated, so again, kind of went to the crushed ice just to make sure that everything was nice and cold and refreshing. It's interesting that both contestants used gin mm. in combination with the uh, ice wine cocktail ice wine. to balance it. That's, that's very interesting. The beer cocktail took the Michelada approach and uh, rimmed the glass first with an herbed salt that had basil, mint, and lime in it. And thankfully, hot sauce and mango play really well together. So combine them with the lager, tequila, a bit of ginger syrup, and lime juice with a mint garnish to liven it up on the nose. I like a salty drink, but this might have a little bit too much salt. If I've uh, been drinking the night before, a little bit of, little bit of the salt yeah. certainly, uh, <laughs> certainly helps recover. That's true. Mike and Christina, when you come back, one of you will be eliminated and one of you will be the winner of In The Mix. How did everything work out taste-wise? Christina certainly did what I would imagine a, a Michelada-style drink. Uh, for Mike, the George T. Stagg, which is one of my favorite bourbons, I don't know if it would have been my exact choice, but it, it did pair quite nicely. Mike uses really pronounced flavors in his drinks. He's not afraid to you know, show an ingredient. Whereas Christina's was really uh, refreshing, very refined, and was beautifully presented as well. So dare I ask, have you guys come up with the decision? I think we have. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. This is it. There can only be one winner. Please open your billfolds. Mike, I think that you have a real flair behind the bar, and I really appreciate your use of key ingredients. I think that maybe you went a little bit over the edge in each one of the cocktails, but ultimately, you're obviously a very talented and fabulous bartender, and we're sorry to see you go today. Unfortunately, Mike, You've been cashed out. It was fun to compete. All the challenges were interesting. I made a few new drinks that I might tweak and put on the menu at the establishment I work at. It's just been a good time. Christina, you are officially the winner of In The Mix tonight. How do you feel? Well, thank you so much. It was uh, such a great competition. And you get to take home two lovely gift baskets. It's with all the products that were supplied for In The Mix tonight, all the alcohol and spirits and bitters and syrups from the crafty bartender. Yeah, that's definitely got a place on the home bar. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Now those gift baskets were a great surprise. I'm happy to add them to my bar and I, I know I have a lot of friends who are going to be pretty excited to dip into those and try some new concoctions at home. That's it for tonight. I'm Dave Mitten and don't forget to tip your bartender. Mm -hmm.